So some cool news on the AI video front, including the release of 22nd native generation from LTX2, plus the release of their new elements feature. And we have a look at real-time video generation that well, you can play with right now for free. It is a little wonky, yes, but it's also pretty cool. All that plus we'll do a quick roundup of all of the other stuff that's been happening. Okay, let's dive in. So LTX has been on a bit of a roll since the release of LTX Video 2, which is due to open source in the next few weeks, but we're already seeing some features rolled out for it. As mentioned in my big LTX2 breakdown video, which is linked down below if you need to get caught up, the model is now capable of pulling off 20 second native video generation. Now the downside on this longer length is that currently at least, this is only available in the fast mode. Um, so as you'll see, uh, yeah, we have 20 seconds available to us here. On the uh, pro mode, of course, uh, the maximum is 10 seconds. Additionally, fast mode is only available at 1080p, which is, I mean, that's still pretty good when you think about it. And lastly, of course, since this is the turbo model, it does generate very quickly, but of course it is more prone to like decoherence and just general wonkiness um, if you end up pushing the model too far. We will, of course, get to bullying the model around in just a little bit, but I mean, at baseline, it's pretty impressive. I mean, this is a 20 second shot of a truck driving around some Pacific Northwest town. Uh, I mean, that's all one shot and it's still going. Lots to like in here, including the fact that the truck does stay consistent throughout. It doesn't, you know, morph into another truck. It's not driving backwards. And more importantly, it doesn't like sprout eight legs and turn into a spider, which is a thing that could have happened 18 months ago or take this like 20 second POV shot of somebody in a hang glider, I guess, over a Pacific Island, um, which by the way, no thank you. This is as close to that as I'd like to get. Uh, but overall, I mean, it looks really good. There is some like texture jagging um, that you might notice in the mountain there. Um, but again, this is like the fast mode. So it, something like this might require an upscale. Now I do have to point out that this is definitely a video model. It is not a world model. For example, take you know the mountains that we see over on this side. As soon as that leaves our field of vision, when we return, you'll see that the mountains are now covered in trees. Um, so yeah, there is no like permanence in this, but although, you know, to its credit, it's, it remember that there was a mountain there, it just didn't get the right one. Now, as I was saying earlier, these longer generations definitely do invite a lot more decoherence and just overall wonk. Um, there is a bit of a solution to that. We'll take a look at that in one second, but for now, uh, enjoy mime in a grocery store complaining about the price of groceries. Oh, another one. Yeah, I'm a mime, so I guess I should just shut up all the time, right? But if I were always quiet, huh, who would complain about the price of milk these days? $7 for this? Seriously? And don't even get me started on the avocados. Daylight robbery, I tell you. These, these tomatoes, they look like they've been through a war and they want how much? Someone's got to say it, right? Prices are insane. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So a bit of a mess, but he's not wrong about the price of avocados. And I, I absolutely would subscribe to a channel of mimes reviewing grocery stores. But overall, I mean, yeah, obviously there are a lot of problems here. We have like this ghost grocery cart back here. Um, some random kid just showing up here, uh, this box morphs into a phone um but you know overall there is I, there's still like a ton of energy in this clip and actually to be honest like the background details of the grocery store actually look pretty good that said while a ton of problems with the text to video output it does seem to tamper down when using image to video so grabbing uh this insane image of a mime in a grocery store and running the exact same prompt you know everyone thinks that just because i'm a mime I should be quiet all the time. But if I were to always be quiet, who would complain about the price of milk these days? I mean, look at the price of cereal. And don't even get me started on the price of avocados. It's outrageous. <laughs> Something has to be done. What's really funny about that is nothing in the prompt mentions avocados. LTX video just clearly has a problem with the price of avocados these days. Now, I do have to note that the voices are not quite there yet. They have improved a lot since launch when we were getting a lot of like very robotic sounding voices, but you know, obviously still not completely natural sounding yet. That said, again, I do know that they're working on it. We, we are hearing some improvements. Uh, and uh, actually we've got something really interesting on that front in just a little bit. Circling back to text to video just very briefly, one place that I do think that this longer generation really shines is with these kind of like atmospheric, long take, Sergio Leone type uh, shots, very heavy on atmosphere, low on action. Um, yeah, this, I mean, it, it really does a pretty fantastic job with shots like this. 
Moving on with some other image to video tests. This is actually a leftover from Planet Hell, the uh, short that I released a few weeks ago. Uh, and this one's kind of interesting because it really does showcase LTX Fast introducing new characters. Now, that said, it definitely gets a bit wonky on the timing, but it is also hilarious. This food is so bland, I can't taste anything. Yeah, it's like they forgot to add any spices on this alien planet. Hey, don't eat the eggs. I heard bad things will happen if you do. Trust me, you don't want to know. I mean, there is so much to love about this, including like the cranky old man who was not prompted at all uh, to the fact that like after he starts talking about the eggs, uh, like our, our main character in the foreground there kind of has this look of like, oh God, don't tell me what happens when you eat the eggs. Just please don't tell me. So again, hilarious as that is with the awkward timings on everything, uh, that does go to showcase, uh, you know, I don't wanna call it a weakness, but it is like an inherent problem within those longer generations is that the model does struggle to kind of pad everything out and stretch it out to 20 seconds. Uh, for example, taking that more or less the exact same prompt and running it in the pro mode with only 10 seconds definitely tightens it up. This food is so bland, I can't taste anything. I like the eggs though. Don't eat the eggs or bad things will happen. What do you know? They hatch. So yeah, despite the darker ending there, I think that does go to show that sometimes less is more. In 10 seconds, you know, pace felt a lot snappier and tighter as a whole. Overall, I would love to see an interval somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds, like at the 15 second mark. Uh, chances are someone, once this does go open source in a few weeks, will tweak it so that we do have the ability to do so. Another quality of life feature I'd love to see implemented at some point or another, be it by LTX or on the open source side, is the ability to keyframe frame within you know that that 20 second time frame i think that would be very handy you can kind of do it via prompt now for example taking a prompt structure like this uh i'll hold this on the screen for just a minute if you need to take a look at it screenshot it whatever um and then running that we end up with uh, an output like this okay yeah okay gazobi's a thing this food is so bland i can't taste anything yeah it's like eating cardboard don't eat the eggs. Trust me, you don't want to eat the eggs. What do you know? They hatch. So, you know, despite some kind of general AI zaniness, uh, for example, when the guy first walks up, I think he says something like gazobies are here or something like that. Uh, we do have the issue with two of our characters talking uh, the same dialogue at the same time. This, I'm not holding that against them. All of the uh, voice video generation models do this now. Uh, VO3 does it, C-Dream does it. Um, they all just kind of get confused as to who's talking. But there's also the impressive aspect where we were able to get additional shots by prompting. They all, you know, pretty much looked consistent and coherent to the scene. Overall, I am pretty impressed with LTX2's like ultra long 20 second video generation. Uh, you know, that said, I, I think that again, going back to what I've said for a while now, not every shot needs to be 20 seconds. Additionally, I am looking forward to seeing the feature ported over to the pro version, as I do think, you know, you're gonna see more temporal coherence on that side of things. And then, you know, ultimately when this whole thing goes out open source, I'm sure there, there's just gonna be a ton of people like cobbling all kinds of interesting new features into ultra long video generation. Sliding over to the other interesting LTX feature release, uh, they have released Elements, which essentially allows you to, uh, you know, whisk, dare I say, um, together a character, an object, a location, or something else, uh, and kind of, you know, blend them all together for a video output now. This is a feature that I do have to say I'm neither uh, over nor underwhelmed with. I'm just kind of whelmed on this one, at least for now. So essentially the way that this works is like, say if we wanted to upload a character from here, we can either upload a character image or generate a character image, uh, name that character essentially via a tag. So this is at James. Um, and then we can choose a voice for that character from another preset voices or create our own voice. Now, well, here's the thing is that what Elements is doing is it's actually just creating images uh, either in Nano Banana or in Flux. And then from there, you can create video and the voice that you assign uh, in that previous module does not necessarily carry over to the video side of things. Are you my contact? What's the password? Fuzzy bunny slippers. 
we should probably change that password. So again, initially, at least I was just kind of like whelmed uh, by this feature. Um, that said, um, two things did kind of occur to me. One, after generating uh, this kind of goth apartment, uh, along with this vampire, uh, and then, you know, combining them together for this output. Oh, I didn't see you there. So I guess Halloween is over. It's a shame I bought all this candy and no one came to my door just because I'm a vampire. It did occur to me that because essentially we have all of these in our library that, you know, we can switch them around so we can go back to James and Jane, our uh, British spies, and pop them into our vampire's apartment pretty easily. Are you my contact? What's the password? Fuzzy bunny slippers. <laughs> we should probably change that password. So yes, at least currently the elements feature is essentially acting like a storage locker for all of your people, places, and things. Um, but at the same time, that is something that is kind of sorely needed. As it stands, I do presume that this will be a platform exclusive feature. I, I don't even know how you would implement it via API. But I will say I do see it being a very nice quality of life feature just in terms of organization. And uh, if they can manage to crack the whole assigned voices thing, well, that's a big unlock because, you know, essentially anybody that's generated in VO or uh, C Dream or anything else that does voices, you know that voices are inconsistent from generation to generation. So, uh, yeah, if they get that voices feature working in Elements, I mean, that is a big deal. Lighting over from long video generation to real time video generation. And I I'm going to admit, this one is a little bit on the wonky side, but it's also kind of cool. Uh, Odyssey ML, who I have talked about on the channel in the past, have updated their video model. We now have Odyssey 2, and well, like it says on the tin, it generates in real time. So the cool thing with Odyssey is that, I mean, you can just go there, the link is down below. Um, you don't even have to sign up, you get a free eight minutes, uh, you, continuously eight minutes, um, just by going there. And then if you do log in, you get a bonus two minutes out of it as well, and logging in is completely free. Um, you can pick from any one of these presets here, or you could just create your own thing. So let's do a night. Uh, walking in a dark forest. And very quickly, obviously, we have a night walking through a forest. Now, is it like the greatest video model known to man? No, it is definitely not. Um, but the interesting and fascinating thing here is that this is all happening in real time and we can prompt for different things to happen. So um, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's do um, f uh, the trees light on fire. Um, and we'll see the trees light on fire. Moment. Yep, there we go. So, um, you know, it definitely has that kind of um, like draw the sword, sure. Um, that sort of like stable diffusion, like or animate diff, like early warpy kind of look. Um, and that's something that I think that you should just lean into. Um, so I have found that like um, open a portal is a lot of fun. Um, so let's just see what happens with this portal. So now we have ninjas running around, we have a portal. Now again, is this your ultimate cinematic AI video generator? No, it is definitely not, but it's, it is a lot of fun to just kind of play around with and to see what is actually the beginnings of real-time video. I mean, I think the best course of action here is just like embrace the wonk, have fun, play around with it, and you know, get an idea of what real-time video is eventually going to look like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just neat. Rounding out with some quick hits, it does look like ByteDance has uh, released a new video upscaler that will take things up to 1080 2K and 4K. It's available over on fall, and it looks like, uh, pricing-wise, it actually looks like it's less than one cent a second. So I uh, have not tested this one out, but uh, it is available So uh, for all of your upscaling needs. Speaking of fall and, well, cheap, um, our friends over at Rev have introduced their uh, fast version of their image editor. So this is Rev uh, Fast edit. Um, once again, this one is only one cent a second. I'm a big fan of like Rev as a platform. So, um, you know, definitely probably worth checking this one out. Uh, I will circle back to this for sure at some point in a video uh, this week. Quen has a new image editor as well. This one's called Quen Edit 2590 uh, Multiple Angle Laura. That's a lot to say. Um, but I, I'll definitely be digging into this one. This, you know, categorize this in your like Nano Banana um, C Dance, C Dream, C dream category. Um, once again, you know, prompt to um, uh, image editing um, of 
you know, an establishing image. This one looks good. Uh, always a fan of these. We As many as we can get, um, I'll take. Uh, I'll dig into this one later on this week as well. Rounding out, of course, last week I was over at Adobe Max. I'm not going to go over any of that coverage because, well, I mean, it's a week late at this point. And, I mean, you guys have heard it all. Uh, but I did want to say it was really great meeting so many of you in person. You know, I'm here in this studio like all the time uh, and just staring into uh, a big black mirror. So uh, anytime that, you know, I get a chance to hang out with you guys who are, you know, behind the camera for me, uh, it's, it's just, it's always great for me. So um, yeah, thank you very much to everybody who I met there. Uh, to anybody that I didn't, I uh, hope to see you at some other event at some point in the near future. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. I'll definitely be back. I'm still catching up on that whole trip. Um, in the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name my name is Tim.